With the development of prehistoric man's controlled mastery of fire, early man also developed many rituals and myths about fire. One ancient ritual developed was walking on hot coals or fire walking. It is my intention to spread out a bed of red hot coals and walk barefoot across them. Now, obviously, I would not be doing this if I thought that there was any significant chance that I might injure myself, although I realize that there is a chance that I might get a minor blister or two. There are good reasons to suspect that I will not be burnt. Many people have done this before me without being burnt, and I believe it can be done again because I know the principles of physics that make it explainable. If we look at the history, we find that fire walking has been practiced for thousands of years by people from all parts of the world. The earliest known reference to it being an Indian story from about 1200 BC. Since then, it's been observed as an organized event in many different cultures and religions. Now, although it was, and still is by some, thought to be a paranormal phenomena, it has actually been fairly well understood and has been explained using the principles of physics for at least the last half century. In the 1930s, the University of London Council for Psychical Research organized two firewalks to study the phenomena scientifically. In 1935, an Indian, Kudabux, and two British scientists walked across a 12-foot fire pit containing mainly oak embers at about 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Then, in April of 1937, another firewalk was performed for the council, this time by a Muslim man Ahmed Hussein, an Englishman, Reginald Adcock, and several others. Neither Kudabox, Hussein, nor Adcock were burned at all, and the others received minor blisters at worst. Pursuant to these events, the Council issued reports stating that neither religious faith nor supernatural powers had anything to do with the performance of the feat, and then went on to conclude that the secret of the firewalk lies in the low thermal conductivity of the burning wood and that the time of contact between the hot coals and the feet is very short. After that, there was not much attention paid to fire walking in Great Britain nor America until the early 1980s. At about the turn of the decade, there was a resurgence of interest due to the very lucrative businesses promoting self-image and confidence boosting courses which relied heavily on people fire walking as a part of the course. However, most of those making money from these ventures tended to portray firewalking as something in the realm of mind over matter and not explainable in terms of simple physics. This view was even endorsed by some scientists and doctors who should have known better. There were others, though, who were skeptical and did not believe that it required a particular state of mind or that anything extraordinary, in the true sense of the word, was involved. Bernard J. Lycan and William J. McCarthy published a paper in the Skeptical Inquirer in the fall of 1985 in which they asserted that firewalking was possible because of the low thermal capacity of the coals as well as the short time of contact that the firewalkers' souls had with the coals when taking a few steps. This 55-gallon drum was full of hardwood blocks about this size of cherry, oak and maple before we set it on fire. It will burn down to form charcoal that looks like this. While the wood's burning down to form charcoal and the bed of red hot coals is made, let's go to my lab and I can demonstrate and explain the principles of physics that make this dramatic feat possible. There are some fairly simple science concepts that pertain to it. There are several features to consider if we wish to understand how walking on a bed of red-hot embers is possible without sustaining injury. Consider that both hardwood and charcoal are good insulators. Wood was used on the handles of such things as saucepans and soldering irons to insulate them before the advent of heat-resistant plastics. Also, wood is an insulator even when on fire, and charcoal is almost four times better as an insulator than dry hardwood. Furthermore, the ash that is left after the charcoal has burnt is just as poor a conductor as was the hardwood and charcoal. Another important factor to be considered is the length of time that the sole of each foot is in contact with the coals. It's neither necessary nor advisable to run. A brisk walk is reported to work best, with each step taking half a second or less. During a 12-foot walk, then, each foot will be in contact for a total time of a second or so. 
Longer walks than I'm going to attempt have been reported and are worthy of study. However, the vast majority of the fire walks that have been performed have been of a similar length to the one I intend to make. Heat can be transmitted in basically three ways. Convection, radiation, and conduction. Convection occurs only in fluids, gases or liquids, that is. It's when the denser, cooler portions of a fluid sink, displacing the less dense, warmer portions. I can demonstrate that using this apparatus, where the heat from this candle is warming the air in this tube, causing it to rise. Hence, cooler air in this tube has to sink and displace that air. Convection's not that important to fire walking, however, as there aren't really any fluids that are significantly involved. Heat can be transmitted by radiation. Radiation is the transfer of heat as an electromagnetic wave. It's how heat gets to us from the sun. I can demonstrate that by lighting this match with radiant heat. Heat from this coil will radiate off, be reflected by this parabolic reflector, go over to this reflector, and then be focused on this match head, which should soon light. Radiation's not that important in firewalking, though, because of the short length of time of the firewalk. Heat can also be transmitted by conduction when two things touch. Conduction is the transfer of heat between two bodies that are in contact with each other, and it's the most relevant to firewalking, as it'll be my feet that will be in contact with the hot coals. Conduction occurs when the energetically vibrating molecules of the hot body collide with the more sedate molecules of the cooler body, hence transferring energy to them. Only the thermal conductivity of coarse charcoal is very low, and that of flesh or skin is only about four times larger. By comparison, the thermal conductivity of most metals is thousands of times larger. I can demonstrate that using this piece of apparatus where a piece of steel and a piece of tile from the space shuttle are being heated by this Bunsen. The metal conducts heat very well, whereas the ceramic tile doesn't conduct it anywhere near as well. So, how does this relate to me firewalking? Well, it is true that what temperature my flesh becomes will decide whether I suffer any injury or not, but it will be the amount of heat that is transferred from the coals to my feet that will directly influence that what temperature the coals are at will be only one of the several factors that will influence how much heat is transferred and by how much the temperature of my soles will consequently rise. So, what I hope is going to happen when I walk is that on each step my foot will absorb relatively little heat from the embers that I cool because they are poor conductors and do not have much heat to give up at any instant. And further, that the layer of cool charcoal between my foot and the rest of the hot embers will then insulate me from their heat. To prove these assertions, let's go back outside and see if the bed of red hot coals is ready for me to walk on. Okay, grab it. You got it? Just lay it down and then tip this end up. I'll walk on there. Okay. Well, the fire appears to be ready. This pyrometer is reading well over a thousand degrees Fahrenheit, and I certainly can feel the heat on my face, although not enough to burn me in the couple of seconds that I intend to stay here nor will enough heat be radiated to my feet in the few seconds it takes me to walk that bed. I'm drying my feet off. It might be an advantage to have wet feet in that it absorb a little of the heat from the coals. I'm more concerned, though, that no hot coals stick to my feet. For that reason, I've put wet towels at the end of the walk to step on after the walk. Well, here goes. Well, 
I appear to be okay. And my experience seems to bear out what the London Council for Psychical Research concluded over 50 years ago and what Lycunder McCarthy asserted almost a decade ago. And that is that a firewalk of this length and duration is not a trick. Rather, it's the short time of contact that my feet have with the coals and the low thermal capacity and conductivity of the coals that's important. I neither need for my feet to be wet nor callous to do this, although either may be of slight benefit. Now, this is not to say that I don't feel empowered by having done that, or that my self-confidence might not have been improved by doing this, or that others might not have their self-confidence improved by doing this. My assertion, rather, is that a firewalk of this length is understandable in terms of simple physics and is neither paranormal nor supernatural.